What I'm going to do in this video is talk about one method you can use to systematically read lateral chest x-rays. Again, you can always use whatever system you want as long as it works for you, but this is a way I use to remember what to look for. First, I want you to remember that lateral x-rays are often taken in tandem with PA or AP x-rays, mostly to give us a different perspective of a lesion, but also to look at areas that are not visible on frontal x-rays, such as behind the heart and at the base of the diaphragms. To keep things consistent, we'll use the ABCDE method, in which A stands for the arch of the aorta and pulmonary arteries, B for bronchi, C for cardiac and mediastinum, D for diaphragms, and E for everything else. Most importantly, the lung fields. Now first up is A, which is the arch of the aorta and pulmonary arteries. You should be able to see the arch of the aorta here, which I'm drawing in red, and really you want to look to see if this is enlarged because that could be a sign of an aneurysm, dissection, rupture. Right below the arch of the aorta is the left pulmonary artery, which I'm drawing in green. I admit that this is actually pretty difficult to make out sometimes, but I do promise you it's there. Now the right pulmonary artery is this thing here, which is actually coming at you. Now the reason you look at the pulmonary arteries are because they can be more prominent in patients with pulmonary hypertension. Next is B. B stands for bronchi. The bronchi is the area here that's darker than the rest of the surrounding area, which I'm going to shade in. Shouldn't be surprising because the bronchi are filled with air, which we all know that air is dark on x-rays. It's actually hard to say if we're looking more at the left or right bronchi, but it's usually not important to make this distinction. Now I want to tie this back into something you, you might remember from your anatomy course. The mnemonic RALS, R-A-L-S, or right anterior, left superior. Now it says that the right pulmonary artery is anterior to the right bronchi, which I'm drawing here, and the left pulmonary artery is superior to the left bronchi. Don't you just love it when things make sense? Okay, next is C. This is for cardiac and mediastinum. So technically, you can separate the mediastinum into the superior, anterior, middle, and posterior areas. But in practice, I don't actually see the superior mediastinum designation used very often. But either way, the superior mediastinum is about here, <clears throat> above the level of the heart. The anterior mediastinum runs from the border of the sternum to the anterior pericardial heart border. The middle mediastinum is basically the heart, running from the anterior to the posterior pericardial border. And the posterior mediastinum is just everything behind the middle mediastinum. Now if you see a mass in the anterior mediastinum, you want to think about the terrible T's as possible causes. So teratoma, thymoma, thyroid, and terrible lymphoma. I'll repeat these again since I'm not writing them down. It's the teratoma, thymoma, thyroid, and terrible lymphoma. Now in the med middle mediastinum, you're really mostly looking for heart enlargement. The lateral view is best for looking at right ventricular and left atrial enlargement. So if there's right ventricular enlargement, you might see the anterior heart border push into the area associated with the anterior mediastinum. And if there's left atrial enlargement, you might see the posterior heart border expanded into the area associated with the post posterior mediastinum, as I'm drawing out here. Now, if you see a mass in the posterior mediastinum, it's going to most likely be neurological in origin, such as a schwannoma, neuroblastoma, or neurofibroma. This shouldn't actually be surprising because the posterior mediastinum contains the spine, which carries most of your nerves. Now we have D, which is for diaphragms. Just like in frontal x-rays, you can look for any air underneath the diaphragms, which would show up as a darker area underneath the diaphragm. But really, the most important thing to look for in the lateral chest x-ray is, is there any fluid in the bases of the diaphragm? So normally, as in this picture here, the coast costal vertebral angles are usually sharp. But if there's fluid in the lungs, then there will be blunting of these angles, as what I'm drawing here in red, if you don't see an actual fluid level instead. Now remember that the lateral is much better at looking for fluid in the lungs and the frontal. And you can also actually see both diaphragms in the lateral film. And now we'll talk about how to determine which is which. So there are two ways to do this. One is by looking at the parts of the diaphragms in the middle mediastinum, and the other is to look at the parts of the diaphragms in the posterior mediastinum. 
If you look at the parts in the middle mediastinum, notice that you can only see one diaphragm. This is the right diaphragm. The other diaphragm, which is the left, is in contact with the heart, and hence it's not visible because of the same principle as the silhouette sign, which we've talked about in a previous video. You can just trace the one diaphragm you see in the middle mediastinum to draw out the entire right diaphragm, like so. And the left diaphragm will just be the other diaphragm, which I'm drawing out in red here. The other way to determine this is to look at the parts of the diaphragm in the posterior mediastinum. The diaphragm that is lower will be the right diaphragm. And this is because the right diaphragm is further away from the x-ray exposure film compared to the left, which causes it to be more magnified or wider appearing on the film. The left diaphragm is the diaphragm that's higher, which I'm drawing in red again. I'll admit that this is really mostly academic, but it can be useful to help identify which lung lobe a lesion is in if the patient has a pneumonia, if you do have a silhouette sign that correlates with the diaphragm. Now lastly, we have E, which is everything else. You should scan the lung fields in a specific pattern, making sure you're not missing anything like this. But most importantly, you want to see the things you can't see well in a PA or AP film, so lesion, behind, lesion or mass behind the heart, as well as a positive spine sign. So normally the vertebra of the spine get darker and darker as you get lower, but the positive spine sign is when the vertebra don't get darker, which means there could be a lower lobe pneumonia. So for the take-home points, Lateral x-rays are often taken in tandem with PA or AP x-rays to give us a different perspective of the lesion and to look at areas that are not as visible on frontal x-rays. And secondly, one method for, use, for viewing lateral films is A, B, C, D, E. A, arch of the aorta and arteries, B for bronchi, C for cardiac and mediastinum, D for diaphragms, and E for everything else. Thank you.